John chapter 1, verse 4. In him that is in Christ, the Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4, in him, this Word, this Jesus Christ, this God was life. As far back as you can go in eternity, forever and ever and ever, there's one changeless reality, life, divine, personal life, ultimate reality, absolute reality, original reality is alive. In him was life. Physical matter did not give rise to life. It's the other way around. Life gave rise to physical matter. Once there was only life and no matter. That's all there was was life. And no physical matter whatsoever existed. And then personal life created matter and there was both life and matter. Now here's a great division between atheists and Christians. The atheistic worldview and the Christian worldview. For atheists, everything begins with inanimate matter and energy. That's where it begins. It's just there, like God. It's just there. And since there was nothing there before to make it what it was, it could have been anything. I'm not sure they think about that very much. It could have been anything. There's no statistical probability one way or the other because there was nothing there to create a statistical probability. It just could have been anything. And they choose to believe stuff and energy. That's just an act of faith. There's zero Zero proof for that. They just have faith. They believe that matter was the first thing that was there. They don't know this. They guess. They guess. They say impersonal matter, impersonal energy are original. They're absolute. They're ultimate. And then... For billions of years, with no creator, no intelligence, no design, no purpose, no plan, there emerges from this mindless, lifeless, random matter and energy, not only irreducible complexities of independent, interdependent biological structures, but also this glorious thing called living personhood, you. And me. That's their account. For Christians, it's the other way around. First, there was life. And then there was matter and energy. First, there was living personhood. And then there was matter and energy. In the beginning was the Word. And in Him was life. Before there was anything else, there was life. Wherever you turn on this planet and see a living person, you see an image of absolute reality. Absolute, eternal, ultimate, original reality. The Word, God. You've never met an ordinary human being. There aren't any. They're all extraordinary. I don't care how degenerate they have become. When you look upon a human being, you're seeing something staggeringly extraordinary in the image of life. 
an echo, a reflection of infinite, ultimate reality. Oh, would that I could walk through Philip's neighborhood, conscious, always, deeply conscious of this. They're all amazing, and they're all dead. Dead. All of them. All of us. Which is why everything that I have said up till this point in the sermon is not the main point of these verses. I've been spinning out implications that I think are really there, which are not the main thing in John's mind at all. Just because I find them fantastically interesting and wonderfully important. But it's not what John's after. That little talk about the last 10 minutes or so, that's not John's point. John's got something else going on here. In, in him was life. The life that John has in mind, as he writes verse 4, is new life. Spiritual life, saving life, the gift of eternal life. The opposite of being dead even though you're walking around. It's the opposite of condemnation and judgment. That's mainly what he means here. Not that the other is wrong. In fact, I could take you to other verses in John to show why the last ten minutes are warranted by this text, but not the main point. Listen to this. This is John chapter 5, verse 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. He doesn't come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Do you hear what that is saying? If you believe in Jesus, you from the entire mass of human death have passed out of it into life. Everybody's dead. That's the meaning of sin and the fall. The entire human race is spiritually dead to Jesus Christ. Apart from him, we're all dead. And with him, we will live forever and not come into judgment with the gift of life. That's the main thing. Here's some other confirmations of that. First John 5.11. This is one of the most important. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. You get that? In him was life. John 1.4. 1 John 5.11. The life is... Eternal life was in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son does not have life. He's dead. So everybody's dead until they have Jesus. You don't need to work to make Christianity controversial. You say sentences from the Bible. Here's another one. John 5:40. You refuse to come to me that you may have life. John 10:10. 10, 10. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. John 10:28. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. So I think it's very clear that what is meant in John 1:4 in him was life is in him was saving life, in him was eternal life, in him was the life which if you have it, you're no longer spiritually dead, you're no longer going into judgment, you're going into heaven. That's the kind of life he means in John 1, 4. And if you have the Son, you have that life, because that life is in the Son. Vital union with Jesus is everything. If you're united to Jesus, you have what he has, life. And if you're not, you don't, you're dead. 